everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. Once again, we are bringing you a special mini documentary. Our topic this week is going to be wilderness. And that is a term that brings a lot of images to people's minds. And over the last 30 years, it's brought a lot of controversy to the state of Utah. We will be discussing wilderness, its scope, its impacts, its benefits, its challenges during the course of the next hour. We will look at it from a state perspective, a federal perspective, and a local perspective. We will try to give you the tools to engage constructively in the wilderness debate here in Utah. But to start, we need to define it. Now, depending upon who you ask, what they say about wilderness will be very different. But let's start with the 1964 Wilderness Act and define it as it is. On September 3rd, 1964, during the second session of the 88th Congress, wilderness was given an official title and a definition. Written law states, a wilderness in contrast with those areas where man and his own works dominate the landscape is hereby recognized as an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man where man himself is a visitor who does not remain. An area of wilderness is further defined to mean in this act an area of undeveloped federal land retaining its primeval character and influence without permanent improvements or human habitation, which is protected and managed so as to preserve its natural conditions in which one generally appears to have been affected primarily by the forces of nature with the imprint of man's work substantially unnoticeable, two, has outstanding opportunities for solitude or a primitive and unconfined type of recreation, three, has at least 5,000 acres of land or is of sufficient size as to make practicable its preservation and use in an unimpaired condition, and four, may also contain ecological, geological, or other features of scientific, educational, scenic, or historical value. But more important than the actual definition of wilderness is the perception of what it is. It's that interpretation that becomes the basis for debate. There's also, as I said, this idea of wilderness, and I think that uh, kind of resonates with some people. They think of the frontier history of this area and like to have some notion of what Utah was like before settlement. You know, there's sort of, in some people's minds, this spiritual aspect of it where you can go out and see what creation was, uh, was really like before influenced by man. And, uh, you know, a wide range of, of values that are tied up in how we use our lands. The actual congressional designation wilderness is an entirely different thing. It is a, the most restrictive land management designation known to man. And if you asked folks what wilderness is, they might see, well, what, what I see when I drive down Highway 15 on the way to St. George. It's basically the way the world would look if there were no people here. And it's the way we found it when, when we when people first started moving this way. And there's no oil wells, there's no roads, there's no lodges, there's no, there's no tracks that have been left by motorized vehicles, uh, maybe footprints, maybe, maybe horses. And it's just as nature left it. Um, there is plenty of land out in the west that is so designated. There is lots of land that is de facto wilderness. There's nobody there. There's nothing happening there. It's too far away. Nobody's found coal or oil on it yet. Um, and so there's quite a bit of that. Wilderness is designated as a way to protect areas of beauty for future generations. The idea is that if left alone without man's intervention, it will remain safe and natural. What's the best tool that fits the circumstances, that protects the values we're trying to protect here? Wilderness turned out to be the best tool for that. I think in some cases you could call wilderness a form of benign neglect. Because essentially you draw a fence around a, a parcel of land and you're not really allowed to do much management at all. That would include vegetation manipulation, for example, if you have a disease or an insect problem on the forest. Your ability to manage that natural occurrence is severely limited. 
As you can see, what starts as a very clear definition becomes as muddy as a southern Utah river in spring when you put public perception with it. So what about the agencies that manage wilderness? What is their definition? Well, you know, the BLM manages 23 million acres here in the state of Utah. What is their perception of the definition of wilderness? Congress has the domain to designate wilderness. We do not. But when we, the BLM, look at wilderness study areas, which is a first step in the direction of wilderness, we look at three things. The things that we look at is the size, which is 5,000 acres contiguous or more, acres or more. We look at the naturalness of the area. Is it really natural with very little man's impact on that landscape? And then we look at the opportunities for really providing a standing primitive recreation. If an area has those three criteria, then we say from the BLM perspective that they are into the category of a potential WSA or wilderness study area. If there's roads, if there's infrastructure, then we make the call and decision that it does not meet the second criteria. People may disagree with us, but that's how we arrive at uh, what we call wilderness study areas, following those three criteria. Those wilderness study areas have become an entirely different controversy in the ongoing debate of how to best protect our public lands. When we come back, we will look at emergency measures and how they, in the minds of many, have become de facto wilderness as we continue our debate in our documentary on wilderness here on the county seat. What brings you to St. George? Business meeting. Staying long? Just here for the day. Quick in and out. Hey, I just landed. Can we meet in half an hour? Not too bad. Why so fast? Stay any longer? We'll run out of things to do. On second thought. <sighs> Buddy, something's come up. I'm going to need another hour. Can we push the meeting till noon? I am definitely going to need to reschedule. Holy... Sit back, relax, and enjoy your 45-minute flight to Salt Lake. How'd that meeting go? I should have booked a weekend. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. In order for there to be adventure, there must first be a land that offers it. In order for there to be discovery, there must first be something undiscovered. It's time you discovered Northeastern Utah's dinosaur lands, the trails, water, beauty, and history that have been 65 million years in the making. Take your journey to a destination where adventure is only limited by your imagination. Join us in Uinta County, Undiscovered Utah. 